money, baby. You finna pay your price. Hit the night, we shining bright. Show you off, you do me right. We living life, blowing cash. Fuck you good, make it last. Pussy wet, throw it back, ride the dick. What's going on with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, so let's get it done. As you can see from the thumbnail, this is about Silver, ex-NF member who uh, who did a lot of damage on the streets and hurt a lot of careers. And a lot of subscribers been asking me since I've been mentioning his name if I could speak on the individual, and I decided to do so. This is gonna be one of those stories that I feel is probably the, one of the most utmost betrayals, forms of betrayals that I've ever seen in my life. So let's get right into it. Hit the subscription, hit the like button, leave a comment. Tell me how you guys feel about certain questions that I ask. And always always leave me more questions. Man, I got 13 more questions I need to ask from subscribers to, you know, to get me up to date, up to par. So let's beat this algorithm up and let's get this channel back on track. The individual's name, he was a regiment commander for quite some time, was Silver Sylvester Gomez. He's from Vario Farmas 14, right here in Farmersville, California. He was a street he was a street regiment commander for for a little while while I was on the streets. Like I said, when I was when I finally signed up for the street regiment, there was a lot of carnales out here. There's a lot from Salinas, a lot from Tulare County, a lot from Kings County. And um, Silver was the kind of type, man, he like he was trying to take things on a, on a real mafia level, not just street level. Most of the time, you're going to see a lot of these street regiments. They sell drugs. They deal with the, like making paisas tax. That's a lot of people that sell a lot of... Uh, Drugs now in the in the valley areas, a lot of vices, and trust me, we ran into some cartel connects that didn't really care. But him, he wanted to extort businesses the same way like the Russian mafia would do it, the Yakuza's would do it. And he wanted to take it to a whole different level. He wanted to have city blocks of every businesses on there paying a weekly or monthly tax to the regiment. A lot of us didn't think that was possible, but you know, some people tried it, some people got caught up for it. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Bubbles is the one that turned me on to robberies when I started working for Bubbles. Silver at the time, Silver was an individual when he got out here, the first thing he wanted to do was target the new flowers, the Nova Flores. He sanctioned like an on-site hit with these individuals, including Weddle T from Tulare. Like he wanted them all gone. So he was establishing a lot of squads specifically to navigate and network within Tulare County and Kings County looking for these individuals to get rid of them off the streets because they he felt that the Nova Flores were doing a lot more damage to the streets and, and stopping a lot of individuals from signing up and working for the regiment or being in compliance. Silver was another individual. He implemented a policy called the no advertising policy. He was trying to stop Norteños in Tulare and Kings County from wearing red. He didn't like the fact that a lot of us would wear red penalties with red shirts and red hats and black and black pants indicating that we were Norteños because he felt that we were just encouraging and giving firepower to the gang task force and the police departments to pull us over and raid us. And he was pretty much telling us, what's the point of moving all these drugs from down south to the valley or sneaking all these drugs from county, I mean, sneaking all these guns from county to county to supply the sergeant of arms and the street regiments with firepower when you guys already put yourselves out as prime targets and to get pulled over anyways. You know, that's probable cause for search and seizures wearing all that red. He wanted us to dress casual. He was always talking about blending in society, you know, acting like the mob, like the Italian mafia. He's all, man, they don't go out there advertising gang colors to get just to subpoena her, uh, police harassment. He had he implemented that. Even though it was followed to a certain extent, a lot of people didn't pay no, when he wasn't around, people didn't really care. He didn't want us walking around with red bottles hanging out of our pockets. He didn't want none of that. And he was trying to put a stop to that. This particular situation, I had a homie named Danger, Greg Montillon. He caught an attempt and had to flee to Larry County. He wanted to move into Nevada. In Nevada, he established a lifestyle doing construction. He met some girl, you know, red hair, green eyes, you know, a little gingerbread cookie named Shannon. He fell in love with her. He had a two-story house, you know, three bedrooms, great job, beautiful wife he was trying to marry. But then something took place. A family, a family relative, which I want to say was his brother, was, uh, was taken out at his sister's house. So he had to come back and leave his life to come deal with whatever took place. Can't get too much into that kind of details because that that's not, you know, 
that's something that you can't be talked about. But he tried, he helped his sister clean up the mess and, you know, and bury his loved one. But as soon as Silver knew that he was back in the picture, Silver gave him a started giving him assignments. And that's what kept him stuck here. He couldn't go back because Silver, being at the regiment commander, is issuing out his orders directly to you. You have to comply with those orders. So you have everything about that goes on in your life has to get put on hold. It don't matter if your son's in a in a, in a hospital on his on his deathbed. If they tell you to do something, they expect you to do it right then and there or else. So he started fulfilling assignments. And the more assignments that Silver kept throwing at him, the more he couldn't get back to the life he was establishing in Nevada. And he wound up getting stuck here. To the point that his girlfriend, his fiance at the time in Nevada, pretty much thought he was down here running the mud, going back to drugs, going back to gangs and told him he couldn't come back. They, you know, she was leaving him. So he lost his life and he had a baby mama down here and a sister down here to protect. So he wound up just mobbing the streets of um, Visalia and just getting more and more heavily involved in the street regiment antics. He worked for the Visalia squad. I was working for the Porterville squad at the time. He winds up getting into it with an individual named Scava from Northside Visa over some girl. He winds up pulling that girl. He falls in love with the girl. He had been dating her for like maybe I think four to six months while he was still working for the regiment. He just kept her out of that. You know, you don't let your girl know, you know, street regiment business. You know, you just got to separate the two. So he always kept her at home. You know, that was his go-to when he was just off the streets. But one day after working for... Silver, for a long time, Silver invited him to watch the MMA fights and talk about business. But it was more or less just a regular party, a get-together, like a family reunion, you know, all brothers coming together, drinking, having a good time, you know, staying away from everything. He decides to bring his new girl along. And it was Joe Hernandez there from uh, Northside Visa, uh, an individual named Manos, who was actually a seasoned hermano, who was actually working for the regiment at the time in, in Stockton. But he was trying to establish like the Stockton and the Tracy area, the, the 209 with the 559, so we can have a, a stronger pipeline to the drug access that's coming past Delano. Because we had two Cardinales that were from Delano that had access to, to, to the drugs coming from LA, which was night out and midnight from Delano. Then you had Baki from Salinas who was living in Kings County and the Bubbles was barely coming out, establishing himself from Pelican Bay. He brings his girl there. He said the moment he walked in and introduced his girl to these three individuals, they all froze and just stared at her and didn't say nothing to her. And was just, he said that Silver was eating a chip just quiet until Joe told Danger, hey, I need to talk to you in the, in the kitchen for a second. So Joe asked him, and they're cousins, actually. And Joe asked him, like, how do you know this, Heine? So he explains to him the situation, how he knocked her from a homie. You know, he's in love with her. That's his girl. That's the one he wants to be with. Yada, yada, yada. Silver walks in the kitchen and he tells him, hey, fool, how do you know this girl? So now Danger's confused. He's like, why you guys keep asking about my girl, bro? Like, what's, how do you guys know her? And then Silver tells him, hey, bro, we've been looking for this Hana for a long time. So now the homie's dazed and confused and he wants, a, he wants a brief breakdown. Like, what do you mean you guys been looking for her a long time? Silver says, man, we've been utilizing her to set up a lot of bottles for a lot. She knows way too much, bro. She got to go. Danger's thinking he just got to escort her out and take her home. Silver tells him, you got 72 hours to get rid of her, bro, or else that's your career. So imagine being put in that bond where it's a, it's a woman that you love and it's your homies telling you you can pick, pick and choose us over somebody that you love and care about. That's a sad predicament. It gets worse. So he goes home for three days and he starts arguing with her, saying how come she didn't, how come she didn't tell him everything that he's been, she's been involved with. But he doesn't tell her that he has to get rid of her. He spends three whole days pondering this. He was thinking about just taking her and going on the run and saying, forget it. But when you sign up with the street regiment, you pretty much got to not only provide your contact info, but, but contact info to everybody that can get a hold of you, which is all your family, your relatives. They knew about his sister. They knew about his baby mama and his daughter. And trust me when I tell you this, the street regiments will come after individuals that are close to you if they can't get to you. On the third day, he was pretty much spun out of his misery, decided to do what he had to do with a kitchen knife over 27 times. He gets busted for it. Manos from Stockton actually offered that girl because she survived $20,000 to not take the stand. She agreed to it. They only gave her $5,000 because Silver didn't want to give up that much money. 
she wound up taking a stand anyways, like nine or 12 months later and testified against danger. Lo and behold, Silver already had stole $60,000 from the regiment and went MIA. That's when Bubbles came out and took over. He already went on bad standings for freelancing and, and stealing from the regiment. Also showed up the day that that lady showed up to testify against danger and he testified against danger too. Only to solidify the case and give the DA a firm conviction to help his case, he pretty much told the DA and the, and the jury that, yeah, I'm the one that sanctioned that hit on her through him. And the homie had to take a 29 year deal with two strikes just so he can have get backs to the streets. I was with Silver on the SNY side too. And what trips me out is that even though he he's a firm believer in Christian now, he changed his life. He's one of the biggest individuals that I've ever seen on the SNY side that has connects. He's always establishing a drug pipeline, smuggling pipeline, has some of the best jobs. He was working for the laundry room at the time. So he pretty much can deliver anything you needed from one building to another building through a bag of laundry clothes. When we were in asset getting transferred to other facilities, our homies on the yard could send us for phones, dope, paperwork, whatever we needed. Give it to him. Give him your cell number. He'd make a laundry bag for you. Hide it in the sock. Deliver it straight to your cell. Cops open the door for him. He gives it to you. That's how much of a pipeline that individual had until he went to the level three from Tehachapi. He was well established with every STG group because every STG group utilized that individual for that purpose until he went to the level three. So it was kind of hard. I did talk to him about it. You know, we... We went over, we used to go down memory lane about me working for him on the regiment. I used to send me on little dumb missions, nothing major when it came to him. Bubbles was the one I was really working for the most. But we went down memory lane, but he was, like I said, I knew, he knew I knew that he took, he took the stand against Danger and a bunch of other people. Plus he was an XNF, so you know he had to debrief. But that individual had his hand in the mix, man. A lot of things couldn't get done until I should be A and B yard unless they went through him. Because he was the one that got it all done. It's crazy, huh? Even though that man lost his position of power on the streets and on the, on the active side, he still had it on the SNY side. But to me, this story I felt like was the utmost betrayal because I'm trying to tell the youth, you want to gangbang and sign up for these street regiments? You want to be this hardcore you know, gang member in Norteño? By all means, just know that your decision making for your own life and your own choices don't are no longer going to belong to you. They're going to belong to somebody else. And can you see yourself being placed in that predicament where they're telling you to get rid of somebody that you love and care about the most? Are you willing to make that sacrifice on behalf of individuals you work for who you really don't know for a street game, for an ideology that belongs to others in prison? Ask yourself that question before you decide to go down this path. It's All it is is one big road to destruction. They hurt a lot of people and they don't care who gets hurt in the process as long as you serve their agenda. So with that being said, man, that was one of the stories that I wanted to share with Silver. There's, a, there's other ones, but they're not quite as intriguing as this one. I thought this was the one that kind of, you know, hits the mark. So with that being said, man, hit the links in the description. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Hit the comments and the like buttons. Share my content. One life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's make it count. Peace.